Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of our Lunchtime Learning webinar series. I'd like to thank everybody for taking the time to join us. My name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the co-chair of the Green New York Operations and Engagement Subcommittee. And I'm really excited for our topic today. Uh, there's been quite a bit of work done in this area, and it's one that I think we can all learn quite a bit about so we can make better choices going forward. A couple of housekeeping things as we're getting going. Um, everyone is on mute uh, when you join the webinar. If you do have questions as we go along, please type them into the chat box when you have them. What we'll do is at the end, I will relay them all over to Kate, uh, and we will get to those questions, so just type them into the chat box. In addition, this webinar is being recorded, and it will be put up on the Green New York website afterwards, so uh, if you miss anything, you want to go back and see some slides or share it with anybody or any of your coworkers, feel free to do that. Again, that's going to be on the Green New York website. Uh, in addition, next month's uh, webinar is on proper paint disposal, uh, which is one that I'm looking forward to myself. I think everybody's got a few gallons of paint in the garage um, that they're not quite sure what to do with, uh, and that's taking place on September 8th at noon, uh, so mark your calendars for that as well. So without further ado, uh, I want to hand it over to Kate Winnebeck, who's going to talk about green garment cleaning. Uh, thanks, Brendan. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Kate Winnebeck. I'm with the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute. And I have uh, managed the P2I's professional wet cleaning program for about the last 10 years. Um, I was pretty active for the first six or eight years, and we've kind of uh, ramped down a little bit for the last few, but uh, I've been very involved with garment cleaning, dry cleaning, wet cleaning at that time. So, um, just to give an overview, what I'm going to talk about today is kind of dry cleaning process, um, wet cleaning process, how those are different, how to find professional wet cleaners, um, and then review the health and environmental impacts of the other DEC alternate results for garment cleaning. So we did a, a consumer survey years ago asking people how they think dry clean clothes are cleaned. And the majority of people had no idea that dry cleaned clothes are cleaned in a liquid. A lot of people thought it was a, a gas that clothes are cleaned. So they're actually cleaned in a liquid solvent. This is the process that they go through. You know, you drop off your clothes, they get a tag on them. Um, they're sorted usually by um, fabric or color. Usually with dry cleaning, it's more color, light and dark. Um, some might go, might have some pre-wash treating. So if you have, you know, a mustard stain on your shirt, they're going to spray that before they just put it in the wash. Then everything goes into a big uh, drum, and it uses solvent instead of water. So your clothes are actually soaked in a solvent, um, and then at the end of the cycle, your clothes stay in that same machine. They don't transfer to another machine. Uh, high temperatures are used to evaporate the solvent. So the solvents are evaporated out. Um, it, it goes through a filter distillation process, and the solvent is actually reused. So after many uses, and it varies among cleaners, how many times the perk solvent or dry cleaning solvent is actually used, um, it gets disposed of as hazardous waste. Uh, there's filters involved as well. Those also get disposed. Um, so at that point, your clothes are considered clean. Uh, any Anything that fell off or loose buttons are fixed. If there's any lingering stains, those are also spot treated. And then garments are pressed, usually with like a big industrial press. Some things are hand only. Um, then they're bagged and they're tagged and ready for collection. The typical dry cleaning process that garments would go through. So here's an example of a dry cleaning machine to give you an idea of what these look like. Um, on the left, we have a spotting board. So this is where they would spot treat, retreat, or post treat clothes for a specific stain. Uh, it just looks like a, a glorified ironing board, if you will. And then two examples of uh, PERC dry cleaning machines. So the one, the picture in the middle there that says Union on the front. That is uh, a dry cleaning machine in use um, in upstate New York. I'm pretty sure that was in the Rochester area. And that was at a shop in a shopping plaza. And then the one on the right, 
it's kind of enclosed there. That is um, in New York City in a co-located residential building. That machine is no longer there, um, but at the time, that is what it looked like. Um, there's glass doors you can see to get in and out of the actual area where the machine is. Hi, Kate. Just a, yeah. a quick thing here. Uh, we've got a couple of people saying they're having trouble hearing um, with the audio, so I'm not sure if you're able to um, get closer to the microphone or, or anything like that. Um, I can try, and I can speak up, too, if that's helpful. Uh, thanks okay. for letting me know, too. Yep. Okay. So when we look at dry cleaning, dry cleaning typically uses PERC, so perchloroethylene, to clean uh, our clothing. That's the chemical that your clothes are soaked in. The average dry cleaner uses about 68 gallons of PERC, and through this process, they release about 400 pounds into the air. I mean, you can read this generates uh, 1,600 pounds of hazardous waste, 190 pounds of contaminated wastewater. So this is why we at the Pollution Prevention Institute had a very targeted program to look for alternatives to PERC in dry cleaning. We know that, that PERC is not the best, so what other alternatives exist? So in our research, uh, we found that professional wet cleaning, so that uses water, um, detergent, sophisticated computer-controlled washers and dryers to clean garments that would normally be cleaned with PERC or that are labeled dry clean only. So. I, I, like, I liken their uh, machines to a, an even upgraded washer and dryer that you would have at home. Um, I think, well, we can go through kind of the wet cleaning process and how it is different from the dry cleaning process. You still have garments dropped off in the same manner. They're sorted, and usually they're sorted by fabric more so than color. <clears throat> so with dry cleaning, you might have lights and darks, and wet cleaning, you might have, you know, silk, wool, et cetera. Uh, there might be some pretreatment. You usually have less pretreatment with wet cleaning. Most of the stains on our clothes are actually water-based, uh, so you don't need to pretreat those stains when you're going into wet cleaning. Uh, the washer and dryer with wet cleaning are two separate pieces of equipment. So you do transfer clothes um, and no solvent is used. They use biodegradable detergents, ciders, conditioners are used. Um, the equipment has very sophisticated temperature and agitation controls. So your washing machine at home, uh, if you have a front load, you know, washing machine that's been manufactured in the last, in the last 10 or so years, uh, you probably have like a, a heavy setting maybe a normal setting, maybe delicate setting. So a wet cleaning machine, instead of having just three, they may have 40 to 50 settings. And the settings will uh, change the exact temperature of the water. It changes the agitation. So some settings may agitate once or twice per minute. That means they're actually you know, circling the drum circles once or twice a minute. So extremely gentle. Uh, they have very precise controls on how much detergent is used. There's uh, automated detergent injection systems, so they know exactly how much detergent is being used as well. Um, water reuse systems do exist, but I have yet to find a wet cleaner, especially in New York, that uses one uh, simply due to cost. You know, there, it's very costly. Um, water, at least upstate, is generally low cost. It's not worth the cost for them to um, reuse their water. So water is discharged after use. Uh, then um, instead of kind of ironing them, they're usually tensioned. And I have a picture. I'll show you what the tensioning process looks like to make sure that they have the, you know, proper shape and size. And then, <clears throat> excuse me. They're bagged and hung, and you pick them up just like, you know, a normal dry cleaner would. So here are some pictures of a wet cleaning system. So on the left, we have a wet cleaning dryer. So this is all the way from the left. The very left is the dryer, then the washer, and then those um, blue containers. That's the 
detergent. So that's the automated detergent injection system that you see there. Again, it, it looks like a sophisticated version of what you would have at home. And then we have a form fitter and a pant tensioner. So the form fitter, you can see there's a, like a dress shirt in there right now. So you put the dress shirt in and then it actually blows air, it blows humid air through the garment and that's what gets the wrinkles out of the garment. Same for the pants. The pants, um, the waist gets kind of hooked in at the top. You clamp the, the pant leg down at the bottom, the cuffs, and then blow humid air through. It gets a blast of hu humid air and then a blast of dry air to kind of set, um, set it. And that's how clothes are wet cleaned. So some of the benefits of wet cleaning that we see, um, garments actually last longer. Clothes are cleaned at the right temperature, the smallest amount of agitation, the perfect mix of detergent. So um, studies have been done and show that garments will actually last longer when they're cleaned with wet cleaning. It's safe on dry clean only clothes. It prevents shrinking and color loss that you might find with um, perk and other solvent cleaning methods. Whites come out whiter. So wedding dresses especially do well with wet cleaning. Uh, it is cost competitive um, and it very much reduces and in some cases eliminates the health and environmental concerns we often see with dry cleaning. So there's some other benefits that the cleaners themselves experience. Uh, they have cost savings. We've done some case studies of cleaners that have converted and they have definite real cost savings. So they, they're using less energy, less natural gas. They're eliminating the hazardous waste associated with perk dry cleaning. Uh, customers tend to be happier because clothes don't have that perk dry clean smell anymore. They actually smell, their smell kind of clean or have no smell to them. Um, there, some cleaners have shown an increase in customers as they can market themselves as environmentally friendly. Workers tend to be happier. Um, there's less time needed to clean wet clean, cleaned clothes than perk clean clothes. Um, and workers are happy not to be exposed to perk or exposed to some of the alternative solvents. And then a lot of cleaners, especially when we talk about urban environments, are located in co-located residential buildings. And you know, a lot of neighbors don't like having a dry cleaner below them for good reason. So uh, especially we had a cleaner in Manhattan who converted from perk to wet cleaning and they're the co-op above them was ecstatic. They were very happy to have that. So, so some other benefits that they see. So if you are interested in finding a wet cleaner near you, uh, we have, we at the P2I have developed a map of about 90 wet cleaners on it right now. The goal is really to provide a reliable source for customers to locate wet cleaners across the state. It includes dedicated and mixed shop facilities. Dedicated shops are those that only do professional wet cleaning. That's the only kind of cleaning they may do. Mixed shop facilities, which tend to be more common, are facilities that may have a perk machine or a hydrocarbon machine and also do wet cleaning. So if that's the case, you need to ask for wet cleaning. Um, the information on our map is populated by, it was initially populated by DEC records um, and some equipment purchasing records. So we actually worked with the manufacturers of the wet cleaning equipment to find out who's purchasing them and where are these cl cleaners located. And then it's gradually moved more into word of mouth. So if you're aware of a cleaner that does wet cleaning that's not on the list or any other discrepancy, please reach out to me and let me know um, that's the best way to, to keep the list updated. I'll show you how to get to it from our website. So this is the New York State Pollution Prevention Institute's homepage. Um, if we scroll down a little bit here under resources, it's right there, New York State wet cleaner map. It is a Google map. It's also optimized for mobile. So if you wanna look at it on your phone, um, let's say we can zoom in here. Um, say you're in the 
Schenectady area, you want to know who's this. That's Five Star Cleaners. There's their contact information. Um, you can even get directions directly from here, from this interface. So any cleaner, anywhere there's a blue dot is a, a wet cleaner. You know, some folks have more information online than others. So um, it's populated and linked to their Google map entries as well. They, they tried to integrate it with existing so that exists. I will also mention, before I go back to my slides here, Brendan shared with me this uh, safer garment cleaning um, sheet that the DEC has put together that talks more about how to avoid PERC. Um, PERC is a probable carcinogen. That's the main reason why we're avoiding PERC. Um, and then kind of shows you, okay, garment cleaners with PERC will have a notice with a white background inside their facility. Those that use an alternative will have a green background in their facility. And I'll talk more about those alternatives. So some of the alternative um, solvents that are in use, this is a, a nice, nice way to look at them and when you're really thinking about, okay, what's the best alternatives out there. Um, liquid carbon dioxide is another kind of what we consider to be the best in terms of um, low environmental and health concerns and also ability to clean garments. That's also important. So liquid CO2 and wet cleaning are kind of the best. Then in the middle, we have this butylol, so Solvon K4, that's the, the brand name. Then we move to siloxanes, hydrocarbon, and PERC. And last. So I'll kind of walk through each of these and highlight some of the human health and environmental concerns associated with each of them. So PERC, as I just mentioned, is a probable carcinogen. Uh, there's definite concern for developmental neurologic toxicity at environmentally relevant con concentrations. So that means there's concern uh, for developmental neurologic effects at concentrations that currently exist in the environment, right? So concentrations that we know are out there um, have been linked to effects. Um, this is especially important, again, for co-located residential buildings. If you live above a cleaner, next to a cleaner, there have been um, studies showing effects in children um, and in other household members due to exposure to PERC. And then it is also persistent in the environment. Uh, there's talk about the degradation products being more toxic than PERC itself actually is as well. Uh, then if we move over to the yellows, we have uh, siloxane. So typically you'll see green earth advertised, the cleaner that, that uses green earth. And um, that's a brand name. Uh, there's some evidence of endocrine disruption, developmental toxicity. It has been detected in food, human tissue, and breast milk. So it's been detected in our bodies. Um, we know it's an animal carcinogen. Not sure if, it's, if that's relevant to humans or not. Um, it has high aquatic toxicity. So you know, if it gets into water, it's also biocumulative. If it gets into the environment, it's really challenging to get it out of the environment. Um, and then hydrocarbons is typically what we see a lot of cleaners move from PERC, if they're not going to go directly to wet cleaning, a lot of them will move to hydrocarbons. Um, and of course, each individual hydrocarbon has its own, you know, even more specific um, set of concerns. But in general, there's some evidence of cancer in animals, evidence of reproductive effects. Uh, we know it's a skin irritant. Uh, and some aquatic toxicity, same for persistence at least it biodegrades. So we see a lot of hydrocarbon in use upstate. Um, not so much downstate, not so much in urban areas because hydrocarbons are flammable. So that's another concern. Um, and, and in co-located buildings, um, sprinkler systems are required for any hydrocarbon cleaner. And a lot of uh, buildings in urban areas don't want to take the risk. So we see less hydrocarbon there and more hydrocarbon in 
like shopping malls, plazas, standalone buildings that we typically find in suburban areas. Then uh, Butylol, so that brand you might see is Solvon K4, that's a Chrysler product, that's the name of the manufacturer. Um, so we know there's low acute toxicity, which is good, but there's not really any information on chronic toxicity. So what are the long-term effects of Solvon K4? Um, no studies have been done on that yet. Um, and we don't expect any real environmental concerns. So that's how uh, butylol or Solvon K4 kind of gets a, you know, a little bit more concerned than wet cleaning, but, but better than kind of the, the hydrocarbon and green earth. And then lastly, uh, liquid CO2, we don't expect any concerns for human health or the environment. Uh, liquid carbon dioxide is not used very prevalently because it's cost prohibitive. It's very expensive to have these, uh, this equipment. It's expensive to run. So most cleaners you know, don't have the money to install liquid CO2 machines. We don't see that very often. Uh, and then wet cleaning, we don't have any health concerns. The ingredients are very similar to typical laundry products. I mean, they're using a laundry detergent. Um, I did an analysis of ingredients of very common wet cleaning detergents and compared them to common you know, household laundry detergents, very similar. There is a potential for 1,4-dioxane contamination in wastewater because they, again, they're using detergents. Anytime we use a detergent, there's a potential for 1,4-dioxane uh, contamination in wastewater. And um, we know that it's in varying concentrations as well. So some, some detergents have uh, less 1,4-dioxane contamination than others. So last, I think this is last, yeah, to wrap, wrap us up, um, what about organic cleaners? I get asked this still a lot, you know, what about cleaners that advertise themselves as eco-friendly, environmentally friendly, safe? What does that mean? So the use of the term organic is really, is only regulated by the food products industry. So if you see a cleaner advertised as organic dry cleaning. There's nothing formal that stands behind that assertion. Uh, same for the use of environmentally friendly, green, non-toxic, eco-friendly, you know, eco-clean. You can see all those logos I pulled over there to the right. Um, there's no regulation saying how and when you can use those terms. So we have found in the past uh, cleaners that were using perk or using hydrocarbon and advertised themselves as organic. They were, in my opinion, skirting kind of this issue. And, um, you know, when a, when a consumer sees the word organic, there's certain connotations, right? We assume organic kind of equates to this environmentally friendly, eco-friendly, better for us, better for the environment concept and they were saying well but it it is organic because it contains a carbon molecule i mean that's that's how far some cleaners have gone so my caution is ask your dry cleaner what they use to clean the clothes um, we called have called many many cleaners and have just asked outright you know, we just call somebody answers Joe's cleaner and I'll say, hi, uh, what do you guys use to clean your clothes? And um, the majority of cleaners were pretty open and would tell us what they use. There was a few that were, you know, why are you calling? Who wants to know? Um, but with some more probing, they were pretty open to, sh to sharing and telling us, here's what we use, here's the process we follow, um, et cetera. So I highly encourage you to contact your cleaner, ask them what they use. Same for the cleaners that are listed on our wet cleaning map. Um, even if you find them on there, I would call them and verify. Or if you're going to visit, you know, when you, you drop off, I would verify with them, what are you using at your shop? There is a cleaner local to me, I'm in Rochester, that does both um, 
professional wet cleaning or at a time they did both professional wet cleaning and hydrocarbon cleaning. And you would drop your clothes off and the cleaner would choose which they were going to use unless you specifically asked for wet cleaning. So you may get your clothes wet clean, they may be, may be hydrocarbon clean and that might be okay with you. Um, but for me, I wanted to know they were wet clean. So I had to ask specifically, you know, can you wet clean this? And they looked over the garment, told me if there were any concerns or issues they had, which there were none, and then my garment was wet clean. So again, communicate, ask, um, and good luck finding a wet cleaner. They're out there. Uh, they're just, there's no directory for them. This is how we got to our, our map. We're hoping that that map is really helpful. So I'll leave this up here. Um, my uh, email address is on here. If you have any questions, if you want help using the map, finding a cleaner, et cetera, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm working from home just like most folks are right now, but feel free to reach out if you have any questions. That was fantastic. Thank you so much, Kate. And uh, with, with that, uh, if anybody has more questions, please type them into the chat box. We have a few here to get through. Um, and I really enjoyed um, you going through at the end of there with some of the, the claims that are out there in terms of the cleaners. I know in a lot of industries, um, it's hard to parse through what's out there. And I think it's, it's really good for us to, to look at that and think critically about um, what is being said as consumers um, and, and what we're really uh, choosing. So the first question we have here is, can you go back and talk a little bit more about the amount of perk that is used per load and um, kind of where that ends up afterwards in terms of, um, you know, filtered out or getting into the air or staying enclosed? Sure. So I don't have those specific numbers in front of me. I know I have them. They're just buried, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. So whoever that asked that question, if you want to reach out to me directly, I can get exact numbers to you. I can talk at a high level and say that, you know, I want to say it's somewhere in, t in the one to two gallons of per that's used per load. I think that's the magnitude we're talking. Um, of course, some amount is going to end up in in the filters, right? Um, the filters are really filtering out lint, dirt, um, anything, anything that comes out of your clothes, right? So that's what the filters are getting. Um, there's, there is, and studies have been done showing that there is perk that remains in your garment once they're cleaned and returned to you. Um, that's why it's important after you bring home your dry clean clothes, this is, this is my advice to anyone that has the space to do it. If you have a garage, if you have an enclosed porch or open porch um, or somewhere that's not your immediate living area, take the plastic off your clothes and let them air out for a day or two because there, there are studies, we know that perk is off gassing from dry clean clothes. Um, so that helps to release, you know, some of the perks. Some does remain, um, but it off gases a significant amount. Um, does that answer the question? Did I miss a piece? Yeah. No, that was great. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we had another question come in here <clears throat> regarding energy efficiency. So we've talked a lot about toxicity um, sure. and the chemicals that are used in the process. Um, yep. Does the wet cleaning process use more energy than uh, the traditional um, either perk or alternative solvent? It uses less. Let me. Um, I'm going to find you. So here's a case study that we did, um, I have this. that we did of a cleaner, all fabric cleaners there in Farmington. And this is right on our website. Um, and you can see their, here's their reduction. Here, this is their metric. 
This was, I want to say, about a year, year and a half after they converted. So we gave them time to iron out the kinks. Is there, of course, with anything, there's a few kinks in the beginning. But they were 100% perk. They eliminated their perk machine, and now they're 100% dedicated wet cleaning. So you can see um, their quality defects too. So quality defects means the number of redos they had to do, how many times did they have to rewash something, or um, actually have ruined garments, right? Occasionally dry cleaners will totally ruin something and it's a loss to them. Uh, and there's their electricity and natural gas uses were about a 30% reduction. So this is similar to other case studies uh, the Toxics Use Reduction Institute in Massachusetts, they have um, a significant program to convert cleaners from perk to wet cleaning. They, they help fund, I think, two or three of them a year, and they've done that for the last five to 10 years. So they have a lot of case studies, and we have very similar um, data. So you can see here's their, their case study data there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. And do you have a link for that uh, that you can send me? I got a question here. Somebody would like a, a link to that. Yeah, I uh, can send study. that to you. Yep, and you can okay, share perfect. it out, sure. Yeah, um, so this one, this is one that I'm always thinking of too. Is there anything that can be done in terms of the film plastic bags, or have you seen any best practices uh, with trying to avoid those? Um, I have, I have seen, some cleaners where you purchase a reusable garment bag, essentially what it is, <clears throat> and you send your clothes in in that, you know, reusable garment bag, and then you get it back in the reusable bag. I've seen those at a few places. Um, that tends to be, I mean, it that I've seen. Some some places it's like customer by customer, so like you may choose to have that bag and you pay a premium for it, and I may not, and I get the film bag. And I've seen other shops where they say, we have no film, you know, this is what you get, and you get the reusable bag every time. But that tends to be okay. what I've seen, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good that it seems to be, there's some places that are working on that issue. Oh, yeah. Um, and of yeah, course, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And if folks do get that film plastic, uh, that can be recycled. You can take it back to most big box stores. Um, so that can be uh, recycled as well. Uh, with the wet cleaning, are there any issues with the water discharges um, from the detergent? There's been a lot of talk about emerging contaminants and some legislation mm -hmm. in that area. Um, any concerns that you've seen or have you done any work with the discharge from those? So I have not done any work specifically on modern, monitoring discharge from those. Um, we have done some work looking at detergents and looking to see how much 1,4-dioxane is in the actual detergent. And I will say that it ranges significantly from essentially non-detect. Um, and I did some modeling looking at, okay, if we know how much is in the detergent, we know how much water is being used, we make some assumptions about how much water is being used. Um, so some of that modeling work has been done, um, has not been you know, shared out externally, has been done. Um, I would encourage whomever asked that question or would like to know more about that to reach out to me directly. Okay. Um, so we had a comment here on <clears throat> Suffolk County has additional signage uh, that yes. they have in their, their garment cleaners. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and if there's any other municipalities that have anything like that around the state? Sure. As far as I know, Suffolk County is the only municipality that has anything like that. Again, I could be wrong. There could be someone else, but as far as I know, it's just Suffolk County. Um, and the, the um, green, yellow, red that I presented here is actually based on Suffolk County. 
based on their, um, their I guess it's a law they have uh, to actually post. So they, if you're a cleaner in Suffolk County, and let's say you use Green Earth, so you would post. They have a specific, you know, template that you use to post in your facility, and it would be yellow. Um, that's their additional posting kind of requirement. So they actually use this color-coded system. Oh. Okay. Uh, so we've got three more questions here. Uh, and if anybody does have any other uh, questions, feel free to type them into the chat box. Um, so with all the benefits that are coming from wet cleaning, um, including to the business itself, um, are there any barriers that have led to it not being wi more widely adopted? I think, yes. So there's a couple barriers on a couple different fronts. Um, so one of them is care, care labels. So care labels in your clothes say dry clean. They don't say wet clean. They don't say professional clean. So some dry cleaners are very concerned about going against the care label. And what if I go against the care label is the customer going to accept that? That's a, that's a very real concern for, for cleaners. Um, the second is uh, you have wet cleaning machines when they first came out around in the late 90s, very early 2000s, which is before my time working on this. This is this is kind of what I've heard. And I've heard this from many folks. Is that they were not great. Okay, so they left a bad taste in a lot of cleaners' mouths, and now they're trying to overcome that because these are now you know new generations of equipment. Like the manufacturers realize that and have made new equipment. Um, you have uh, language barrier issues are very real. Uh, a lot of cleaners um, speak Korean, so that can be a barrier. Um, we also find customers in general, when we tell, when we talk to the public, and we tell them that, you know, dry clean clothes, so this wool suit that you've been told cannot go in water, you know, is going to shrink in water. Oh, no, we can clean it in water. People already are like, no, I don't want you to do that. That tends to be the, the feel from the majority of people. Um, so there's some stigma around it still. Uh, the fabric cleaners, that was a case study I put up in Farmington. Um, he actually converted and did not tell his customer that he converted because he was afraid that if he told them he was using water to wash their dry clean only clothes that a lot of them would say, no, I'm taking my clothes somewhere else. What actually happened is his, his customer came back and said, wow, what did you do? Like my clothes smell a lot better. They're a lot softer. Like what's going on? Did you change something? So once his customers were happier or he, you know, that was the feedback he got. Now he lost no customers. It actually has had an increase in customers since he, since he switched. Um, then he started to, to talk about it a little bit, but he still doesn't advertise that, that he's a wet cleaner. Um, it's, it's more word of mouth for him. So I think there's, there's some fronts and, and very different, you know, there, there's different areas and different things that we can be working on to make wet cleaning kind of more more acceptable and more viable. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so uh, two more questions here, and that actually segued sure. nicely into the next one that we had here. So it's <laughs> great when that works out. Um, so with this, um, the person mentioned that uh, they've, they've asked cleaners before about wet cleaning, and there's been miscommunication regarding kind of just laundering shirts yep. um, versus professional wet cleaning, um, where a place will say, yeah, yeah, we, we do wet cleaning and you get it back and it smells like the solvent or perk. 
um, because they're thinking of the, the shirt laundering. Um, any suggestions on, on ways to talk about this? Um, yeah, we have had the same problem. So when we talk to cleaners, you know, we, we will talk to them and say, you know, okay, but we're not talking about shirt laundry. Like, we know you do laundry. That's different. We're talking about, you know, can you clean a wedding dress and water? Will you clean my wool suit in water? Like, we'll actually give them examples. And ask, you know, or, or we might say, well, what, what else do you use? No. Oh, I have a hydrocarbon machine. Okay, so do you have a hydrocarbon and a wet cleaning machine and a washer and dryer? Like, what do you really have? And try to get an understanding of, okay, are people actually wet cleaning or, I mean, to your point, are they laundering? Right? Because that's what wash and fold or like shirt laundry. I mean, that's what we, we call laundry. That, that's the term we, we at P2I use for that. And, you know, most cleaners, have their dry cleaning set up, they'll have a dry cleaning system, and then they'll have like a, a home washer dryer there to do their shirt laundry, to do their wash and fold. That's very, very common. Um, wet cleaning machines can also be used to do laundry. So some facilities that do wet cleaning, they may only have a, a wet cleaning washer dryer because they can do everything in their wet they don't need the separate washer dryer. Oh, that's great. That's another benefit for the business. Yes. So we've got one more question here. And if anybody has any final thoughts or questions, feel free to type them into the chat box here. Um, is you mentioned hydrocarbons for some of the alternative solvents there. Um, are those based on fossil fuels um, or are there other kind of the source of the hydrocarbon itself? Um, I mean, I'm assuming they're based on fossil fuels. I don't, I don't know that offhand. Okay. Yeah, and that, that's um, become an issue in a lot of other areas too when we're looking at supply chain and we're looking um, kind of upstream with products. And um, yeah, this person really got to it. Um, you know, is where yeah. when we're talking about kind of transitioning to a low carbon economy, um, yeah. You know, there's the, the basics of, you know, driving electric vehicles and that displaces, um, you know, fossil fuels. But mm -hmm. um, it'd be interesting if this is another area where switching from a hydrocarbon base to, you know, wet cleaning would eliminate some fossil fuels from the supply chain for this. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we've also found, um, so we haven't done a comparison of hydrocarbon perk and wet cleaning in terms of like energy usage and cost savings. But other folks have, California has done work in that area and find, have found you know, hydrocarbon has very similar um, energy use profiles. Actually, all of these do or should because they all work kind of in the same way. So whether you're using Solvon K4, Green Earth, a hydrocarbon or PERC, your clothes are going into a machine, they're getting soaked in this liquid detergent, or excuse me, soaked in this liquid chemical. Um, and then, you know, same, we have the same filtering distillation process and the chemical is reused. So, so really the big energy hog, if you will, in that process is the distillation process, right? Because you need to heat up the clothing a lot because you need to get all that chemical to, to evaporate out of the clothes. <clears throat> then we have to distill it down. Um, so that's the big energy usage. So in wet cleaning, you eliminate that. We don't have to do any of that distillation. You don't have to do any ev ev evaporation, I mean, beyond a, a um, dryer, what your, your typical dryer would be. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, there's going to be less energy. I mean, when you compare wet cleaning to any of these others. And we'll say, I believe liquid CO2 has a higher energy footprint. Because of the compressed, okay. compressed liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and one of the issues I've heard um, about that too is that um, CO2 has such a negative connotation 
um, yes. that some places don't want to, are, you know, hey, we're putting CO2 in everything and it could escape. Yeah. People just think climate change. Um, yeah. So that's, I think, an issue with getting that technology out there as well. So we had one more question that came in. Um, are there any moves that you know of to increase regulation of PERC or hydrocarbon? Um, you know, there's the December 2020 regulation for co-located residential buildings. I, to be honest, since COVID, I don't know if anything has changed with that. So that legislation says in December of 2020, you can no longer use PERC in a co-located residential building. So again, you find that in a lot of urban areas especially New York City, they're on the first, you know, a lot of these cleaners are on the first floor of an apartment building with apartments up above them. So the, the legislation says, starting in December of this year, all those cleaners have to convert, they can no longer use PERC. Um, I don't know what the current status is of that, if someone has somehow slowed down that implementation somehow, I'm not, I don't know. Um, in terms of hydrocarbon and in terms of PERC, usage, you know, outside of the co-located residential, I'm not aware of anything right now. Brendan, are you aware of anything? I'm not either. Yeah, I'm not aware of any, any other legislation right now. What's interesting though in New York City with this 2020 deadline is that <clears throat> I think what we were, we were hoping would happen is those cleaners would, you know, convert to wet cleaning um, or even convert to like green earth. Uh, they're not going to convert to hydrocarbon because again, we have the flammability issues. So a lot of landlords don't want, you know, flammable gases or flammable liquids in their buildings. So we were hoping that cleaners would just convert, existing park cleaners would convert and kind of go about their business. What has happened is a lot of them have um, either completely closed or they've converted to drop shops. So a drop shop is where, um, let's say you live in Manhattan, you drop your clothes off at your neighborhood cleaner. They don't do any cleaning there. They actually ship the clothes off site. They're finding a lot of it is done in New Jersey. They'll have a, a bigger plant there. Now it's not in a co-located residential building so they can have a perk machine or they can have many large perk machines and they'll wash the clothes there and then they bring them back into Manhattan and you go back to your shop on your street corner and then you um, pick them up there. So that's kind of been the, the drawback um, of that legislation. But I'm not aware of any other legislation currently. Mm -hmm. And with that, do you have any final thoughts for folks? Um, my, fi my final thought is if you can avoid any kind of dry cleaning or garment cleaning, that is the best thing to do. You know, if we don't even have to be talking about uh, any of these in terms of, you know, energy, water, et cetera, that's the best. Um, if that's not possible, you know, seek out wet cleaners, ask your cleaner, for, for wet cleaning, tell them that you're interested in this. Um, that's, that's the way that cleaners convert. Is cleaners convert because customers are asking for it. So if enough customers ask for it, then they'll, they will implement it. That's really good advice. And I wanna thank you so much, Kate, for being on today and presenting. That was a really great thorough um, overview of it. And thank you for taking everybody's questions. Um, again, uh, if people want to see a recording, if they want to go back and see something or share it with their coworkers, um, you can go on the Green New York website and we'll have a recording there. And uh, just a reminder that our next uh, webinar is going to be on Tuesday, September 8th at noon, and that's on proper paint disposal. Thanks a lot, everybody, and have a good day. Thank you.